Look, Ken, I know you hate letting Denise off Daniel, but is it worth giving yourself a breakdown over? Signing my son over to his monster of a mother? You're right, fuss over nothing. She isn't a monster. Not with him. Look, it's not as if you're never going to see him again. I know it's not ideal, but at least Scotland's only a few hours away. I mean, what if they were going to flip in Australia? Yeah, well, how do I know they won't? Oh, talk about meeting trouble. Look, Ken, I understand how much it hurts. A lot of the things life chucks at you hurt. But you've got to accept them and move on. I should know. Yeah, well, that was different. Yes, it was. I didn't get visiting rights or holidays. My loss was permanent. I'm sorry. It's all right. Listen, I'll come round tonight and I'll make us a bite to eat. Or else we'll go out, whatever you fancy. You are doing the right thing, you know. Am I? You mentioned something about suing them. Uh, you know, for breaking the contract. Yeah, the scumbag stood there laughing at me. And you damn well I wouldn't. Well, why don't you just call his bluff? And get more deeper in, Hock. We don't no guarantee that we're going to win. No. That wouldn't be a bluff. He'd be betting on a dead cold certainty. So what do, you, what do you suggest? We just shut up shop and let him get away with it? Well, not necessarily. I mean, the Quebec label still sells. Even if it is going through a few glitches. Well, I don't see how that's going to help us. It would if we flogged the stuff at half price. Which is doable if we cut out the middleman. Yes, but aren't they going to want all their stock back? So we make some more. We've got the girls, we've got the equipment, we've got the knowledge. I mean, what more do you want? You mean make counterfeit goods? I mean, well, isn't that illegal? Well, uh, it wouldn't exactly be fakes, would it? It'd be uh, a clone. A clone of what we're already producing. Yes, but it wouldn't be under licence. I mean, Quebec could sue the pants of us. Oh? That's if the trading standards people didn't get there first. Yes, only if they found out. And I won't snitch if you don't. Oh, no, Mike. I know it gives you a buzz sailing close to the wind, but I just find it terrifying. Oh, come on, darling. I'm not talking about robbing banks here, am I? Oh, there must be another way. Yeah, I'll think of something you usually do. Poach an ice egg, you do. Hmm. Raquel used to say that. Just the right wobble factor. You see, hers used to burst. Is it really over between you two? Yeah. Divorce on the cards? Well, we've not got that far. And anyway, I don't want to talk about it. When things don't work out, Curly, you got to move on, you know. And you'd know all about that, would you? A bit, yeah. Now, this breakfast thing, it's not going to be your turn today, so it's mine tomorrow, you know. It's not going to be some cosy little flat share. Oh, well, Samantha, with you, um, the word cosy doesn't spring to mind. Well, you have to admit that Stephen's quite an operator, if what Mike said last night is true. Now, oh, come on, you'd not believe a two-faced lie like that over your own brother. He didn't deny that he'd used Don as an excuse to end the contract. Well, why would they need an excuse? To save Quebec thousands in compensation? I don't know. No, you don't know. Mike Bolton would have done exactly the same if the boot had been on the other foot. He's done plenty worse. Mind you, he never was anything but a jumped-up East End barabar. I only ever put up with him for Alma's sake. That's very tolerant of you, Audrey. Oh. Coming from a backstreet grocer's wife. Oh, Alma, I'm sorry. Oh, oh. don't go apologising. I suppose your husband's told you about his disgusting behaviour, has he? He told me he stood up for himself, yeah. What? Barging into a family do and shouting the odds? He's worried sick, you stupid woman. All because of your precious son. Oh, Alma. Stephen is twice the man your little runt of a husband ever was. As you are very quick to spot when you set eyes on him. Ma'am, go and do some shopping, will you? Let things calm down a bit. Don't bother. I'm going before I say something I really regret. Miss... Uh... Failsworth. If you're selling insurance, I'm not interested. Same goes for double glazing. Ah, Samantha, this is my boss, Mr Furman. All right. I'm sorry, you just get all sorts knocking these days. At least you didn't take me for a Bible, better. 
Right then, Curly, I'm off now. And if you feel like doing a bit of hoovering, I shan't be offended. Look, it's not against the rules. See ya. Bye. I must say, I can see why you opted to move back. Uh, no, it's not like that. I presume it was also not like that with Miss Malone when she asked you to leave. Oh, I see. Now I know why you uh, told me to take some time off. Well, for your information, Anne Malone never asked me to leave. I left of my own accord. Now, what exactly did she say? It wasn't so much what she said, what she didn't say. Well, yeah, she's far too clever to tell an outright lie. She just tells a few subtle hints. And you join the dots, and the next minute I'm a, a serial rapist. It wasn't like that. All the... Whatever she accused me of, it's all in a peculiar little head. I very much want to believe you, Norman. Well, then believe me. I've never laid a finger on Anne Malone. I'm not interested in Anne Malone. All of Samantha Failsworth. I'm not interested in anyone. You know why? Because I happen to still love my wife. More fool me. Be that as it may, you must understand, I can't just ignore something like this. I suppose you can. Right. We'll leave it at that for the present. I'll see myself out. All set for Sunday? Can't wait. Hope there aren't too many mountains on this hike. You get snacking just going up the stairs. This is from a man whose idea of exercise is using the remote control on his telly. It's a pleasant country ramble. A baby could do it. Well, I can understand why she feels aggravated. Well, Gail's hardly slept. Well, she ate scenes. Well, who does? Yeah, it's like I said to her, though. I told her, I said, Audrey, love it. It's between Mike and Stephen. Mm -hmm. You know, I might as well have been talking to that wall. Where Stephen's concerned, he can do no wrong. Oh, it's exactly the same with Nicky. You know, he say one word against yeah, him. Yeah, I've nothing against Stephen, but when you think about it, bowling has got a point. In business, he is ruthless. <laughs> Well, I can't say it's come as a total surprise somehow. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll go straight with you. I mean, I can't get worked up about the old boiling. I've mm. only known the lad for one year, you know. She can't expect me to feel the same way about him. Well, that's what it's like when you inherit someone else's kids, Alf. You've got to take them, warts and all. Yeah, the trouble is a good and Audrey. Her Stephen hasn't got, got any warts. You'd think it was a second coming. <laughs> well, not nice, quiet little Kev. Oh, yeah. Nice, quiet little Kev. Well, he's not so quiet when he's chucking his way around, is it? Hey. You know his latest stroke, don't you? Only tells me we've got a backlog, so we have to work on Sunday. I mean, you know, not asks, you understand. Tells me like I'm his flipping grease monkey, not his partner. Well, say him again, please. Right, mate. Uh, one egg mayonnaise take up, please. Brown or white? Brown, please. Thank you. Thank you. Talk to her. I tried. You saw how she was. I'll try again. How long have you two known each other? Fourteen. Fifteen years. Well, I suppose it's not the first fallout you've had, then. No. But it's the worst. I know something happened last night and I don't want details, but is it worth spoiling a good relationship over? Enough of this. I'm going to get our coats. Royal cope. <sighs> so where are we going then? Anywhere private where we can sort this mess out. The only way we can do that is if you can get your brother to change his mind. Can you? Hmm? No, I thought not. It's not our quarrel, Alma. We have to work together. We can't go on not talking. Oh, come on, that is the least of my problems with my face in bankruptcy. I... But you can't blame Stephen for that. I'm sure he didn't want to end the contract, but if he was under pressure from his bosses... Oh, only obeying orders. Now, where have I heard that before? Look, if he was told to cut back, what choice did he have? Well, at least he could have been honest instead of taking the high moral ground and pretending it was all because of Don Brennan. Don did try to kill himself. Yes, but not because of Mike. So how come he was fine until Mike dropped him in it over the garage? I mean, that's when the rot set no, in. No, no, never mind fine. I seem to remember him being pretty upset before that when you were threatening to go to court to take his home off him. That was all settled and you know it. Yes, but not before you put him through a load of aggro he could have well have done without. Perhaps if you both sat down... Anyway, never... Don Brennan is irrelevant. 
I mean, Stephen didn't care about him. He didn't give a damn about him. He was just a convenient excuse to get Quebec to wriggle out of their agreement because he knew they were going down the pan. They were restructuring! No. They were in trouble, Gail! And what does Mr Big Noise executive do? He uses an attempted suicide to get his company off the hook. Well, I think that is disgusting! Well, you didn't think he was so disgusting when you tried to get him into bed, did you? I mean, Mike wasn't Mr Wonderful then, was he? You'd have dropped him like a shot if Stephen had shown the slightest bit of interest. Hello, Canada! Goodbye, Mike! You really are a nasty little piece of work, aren't you? No wonder your son chose not to come home. <laughs> It'll uh, blow over. Will it? If you want it to. I do. Alma's the big sister I never had. Uh, and your best friend, female of that ilk? We've shared a lot of laughs over the years. Not to mention tears. Well then. She feels she has to stand up for her husband, Roy. Right or wrong? You feel you have to stand up for your brother, right or wrong? Yes, I do. Well, what's the latest? Has she seen sense yet? I told her to leave you in peace, but she would come. It's all right, love. If by seeing sense you mean come round to your way of thinking, no, she hasn't. Oh. She still sees Stephen as the baddie in all this. And if I was in her shoes, I'd probably think the same. Oh, Gail, come on. How can you side with them against your own flesh and blood? She's siding with nobody. She's just trying to see both points of view, which is something you never do. Alf, I support my kids. Yeah. Now, you've never had any, so you wouldn't know. Oh, man. Well, he doesn't know what he's talking about. She's still sulking, then, is she? Leaving you to get on with it, as usual? No, she did come in. I tried to talk to her, but I only made things worse. I said a lot of things I shouldn't have said. Now I feel awful. Now, there is no need for you to feel bad, gay love. Now, come on, it's her silly rotten husband that's caused all this. It's hey, not you. fair dues. Your Stephen's had a bit to do with this, you know. I mean, I may not have any children of my own, but at least I can see facts without blinkers on. And what do you mean by that crack? I'm just pointing out that there are two sides to every story. Give us a cup of tea, will you, right? There's a good lad. Uh, make it strong. Oh, I thought everyone had gone home. I felt the same when Jeff first left me. Couldn't face going home to an empty house. Oh, it's not as though I haven't had enough time to get used to Daniel being gone, but... Well, up to now, there was always the hope that... <sighs> I was so damn sure I was going to get him back one day. Come on. I've got a rather good bottle of cognac in the office. Emergency supplies. Look, I know you're a Scotchman, really, but um, it does you good sometimes to have a change. Okay. Thank you. Now, is your uh, flatmate not in? No, she's working. Come in, shut the door. Tea? Well, thank you, Edith. There's a duck coming nicely to the crisp. What you were saying earlier about Raquel? You were there when it fell apart. I mean, you saw what it did to me. Indeed, it's just that uh, in moments of grief, we're liable to turn to others for solace. Well, I never turned to Anne Malone. What is this? This morning you said you believe me. I want to. But it seems you weren't completely frank with me about why you left Better Buys. You know why! Calm down, Norman. I've told you I'm on your side. But to get a clear picture, 
I had to make a few further inquiries. The name of Furman's commands respect in the world of frozen foods. It stands for quality, service, good old-fashioned family values. I have a duty to protect that good name. Do we have to go through all this again? Humor me. Fill in the blanks. There's nothing new to add. I knew there was one accusation of sexual harassment. A false accusation. What I didn't know was that there have been two. Stupid misunderstandings both times. Reg knew that. Do you think he put me up for a job with you if he had any doubts? In the light of his own recent behaviour, Reg Holdsworth is hardly a judge of moral rectitude. Now, wait a minute. It was me that told you about Leo. Remember? Even though he was your nephew and I could have got sacked for it. I can't stand men who take advantage of women. I'd never go in for it myself. Very well. I hear what you say. And I accept your assurances. For both our sakes, I hope the subject never arises again. However, should there have been the smallest hint of any misdemeanour in the future, then sadly, brother or no brother, fond as I am of you, I shall have to let you go. Yes, I was lucky again. Right, please, gorgeous. The name's Samantha. Oh, consider me wrist slaps. Have one yourself, Samantha. Gorgeous. Yeah. Blowing it out, has she? Nah, I'm not bothered. I mean, she's a fit babe, but she'll have your whatnots for breakfast. I prefer the more submissive type myself. Like her from hairdressers? Which her? I've had both of them. Maxine? Oh, that her. Yeah, she's a bit 40 what? But she's not going for all that feminist garbage. Mm. There you go. Ta, Ms. Failsworth. So do you still? We'll go out the like. Nah, they feel me. Too young and lovely to tie myself down. Why, you uh, fancy your chances? No, just interested in who's with who, like. Uh, right. Shall I tell you I'm not with lads, if that's any help? Name any flipping female on this planet and I'm not with her. But yes, Curly, how are you doing? Lousy, thanks to your ex-girlfriend. Go on. Hey, hey, he looks in. How's the boyfriend? Arrested any good villains lately? Oh, just stood her up again. He has not stood me up. He is on an important undercover operation. Mm. Yeah, but under whose covers? Yeah, well, at least he's not some boring boy with mm. some boring job who mm. is there boring me on your doorstep every boring night. Mm. Oh. I do hope you're not referring to a certain garage owner. The cap fits, mate. Oh. Um, two white wines, please. I'll get them. Yeah? Two white wines for the ladies, please. <laughs> oh, come off it, Curly. I might be a little bit devious, but she wouldn't tell an outright lie. Well, obviously, you don't know her as well as you thought you did. She likes you, Curly. Why would she want to get you into lumber? To punish me for turning her down. How are you getting paranoid, man? You'll be saying she's bowled your pet rabbit next. If I had a pet rabbit, she probably would. Doesn't say a lot about me, though, does it, eh? I mean, the minute I missed you, she gets fixated with you. Fixated? That's the word I've been looking for. I mean, I've always admired Anne's single-mindedness, but you've hit the nail on the head. That's what she is. Fixated. Look, I know Raquel going, not you for six a little bit, Curly, but get yourself back on the planet, eh? <sighs> Any better? Oh, I feel a bit of a wimp, having to be driven home by a mess like a snivelling first year. <laughs> You didn't have to be. I offered. And I sincerely hope that isn't how you think of me, as Miss. Oh, of course not, no, I'm sorry. You've been terrific. As you were with me. At no small embarrassment to yourself, if I remember. All in the past. There is one problem that's very much in the present, I'm afraid. I know this isn't the best time to... Go on. Peter Ross is looking for redundancies. Did they mention names? Not as yet. But he won't go away. I'm still under pressure to cut staff. Great. I lose my son and my job in the same week. Oh, look, it hasn't come to that yet. Yet. Ah, oh, I shouldn't have brought it up. Today of all days. Look, I, I am sorry. Oh, Deirdre, uh, you remember Mrs. Jeffers, Deirdre is Tracy's mother. Your ex-wife, of course. Nice to meet you again. Likewise. It's not just Mike and Stephen. We're all at each other's throats now. 
Me and Alma. Me mum and Alma. Me mum and Alf. Alf? She made a nasty remark. She didn't mean it, but Alf got hurt. Yeah, well, I shouldn't worry about Alf too much. Audrey's barbs are like water off a duck's back. I hate all this. Everyone falling out. I almost wish Stephen hadn't come back. You don't mean that. No, of course I don't. And he has been good to Nick. Mm, and us. A trip of a lifetime, remember? But he did drop Mike in it. Hey, I think Mike can look after himself. Now, don't start taking everybody's worries on his shoulders, Titch. It's not him. It's her, Alma. She's like a stranger. I just wish things were back the way they were. Oh, I. I thought you'd have gone to bed. No, I waited up. I must have dozed off. Have you eaten? Yeah, I've got a bun up the Mataway services. You look shattered. Shall, shall I get you some soup? No, honestly, don't bother. I'm too weary to raise a spoon. Mike? Yeah? Has anything happened? I got in touch with my contacts. Half of them have got out of business. The other half get their stuff from Delhi or Taiwan at about a penny a gross. So, um, nothing at all? A few bids and bobs, but uh, not enough to pay the rent, let alone the wages bill. So what are you saying, that we uh, shut the factory? Well, it's a catch-22 situation there. We can't afford to keep it open. If we close it, lose a lot. Well, is there any uh, chance of increasing the overdraft? What, hike-up charges I can't afford as it is? No. Nah. Anyway, on present form, they blow me out. Now, the only option we've got is to uh, try and raise some cash to keep afloat and drum up some new business somehow. We could sell Crimea Street. <laughs> no could about it. We've got to, mind you. That won't be the answer to all our problems. It's not our only asset. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, I wouldn't sell the roof over our head. No. I'd go out and sweep roads before I'd flog this place. No, not the flat. The, um... The cafe, I've decided uh, I'm selling up. Have you thought this through? I mean, are you sure? Yeah, quite sure, and there's no need for you to feel guilty about it. I'm not just doing it for you. I want out of there. I've had enough. 